Can I get real for just a second? This is my studio after really a couple of months of working and grabbing things on the go, doing different kinds of recording and jobs, uh, grabbing gear out to go play a show or a gig, uh, and uh, I'm about a year <laughs> into needing to do a major reorganization on this space. I have a new desk that's been sitting outside for a couple of months and uh, it's just time for me to get in here and tear everything apart and start over. So join me as I try to tackle the explosion that this space has become. I'm fascinated by how different people set up their recording studios, whether they're large studios or just home studios. How someone orients a room and the gear that they select and the way they curate the space in order to accommodate their processes is fascinating to me. I think that that kind of work is as much of a creative act as the recording. And, and you see that too with visual artists who are really committed to their studios. They are continually tweaking, curating, to use a word that Tom Sachs originated, I think, knolling their spaces in order to make them more efficient and just make them feel good. Because when you walk into a space or you sit down at your desk, the way that it is projects a lot emotionally on you. So giving some thought to it and also accepting that it evolves over time. My space is in a constant state of flux. Rarely do things change fast. It tends to be more that I'll adopt some new way of working or find a new use for a particular microphone or piece of gear and that'll work its way into the setup. And maybe over the course of a few months, everything looks different than it used to, but rarely do I just tear it all down and set it back up again. Though recently I made some large shifts. I went from working on an analog console to working mostly in the box. So the console left and I got a new desk. That's nice and clean and streamlined and I have my computer keyboard and mouse and MIDI keyboard and monitor controller all easily accessible. I have a little space for some note cards where I can write down ideas and a coaster for a beverage which is essential for my recording process. And I got rid of some furniture that was kind of big and heavy. I had sort of a chest of drawers thing that I was keeping a lot of cables and microphones and guitar pedals in. And the thing I didn't like about that is that stuff just sort of disappeared in there. I couldn't see it. And then I would sort of forget that certain things existed. And I like to be able to sort of turn around at my desk and look at the gear that I have in this room and get inspired by something and say, oh, I haven't used that for a long time or whatever. That snare drum might be interesting on this song. So I've tried to adopt a policy of leaving things out where they're, I'm able to see them visually so I can grab them quickly, both in my mind and physically. I tend to keep things fairly simple. To me, the source is the most important thing. So the way that the drums sound or the way that the guitars sound is kind of the first step. If it's not sounding cool to me in the room in person as I'm playing it, then that's not going to really, that's going to, whatever is happening is going to translate to the recording. So I tend to focus on that. What guitar am I using? What drums am I using? Are these appropriate? Am I going to get the right things out of this for what I want for a piece that I'm working on? And then after that, microphone selection makes a big difference. I would sooner change a microphone on an amp than try to completely transform it later in the process. I like to get things that sound good to me on the way in 
to the computer so that I will spend less time fussing with them later because there's a bazillion plugins. I don't know how many plugins I have, but it's a lot. Uh, and you can spend hours going down different rabbit holes of what you could do to this sound with that plugin or this plugin. So I'll focus on the source and the microphone. I have a limited number of mic preamps in here, so things tend to get unplugged and move around. And it also is another layer of keeping me from doing too much A-B testing. I've been in scenarios where we've had 20 different kinds of mic preamps available and 50 microphones and four acoustic pianos and the A, B, C, D, E, F testing that you can do in those scenarios is fun for a minute, but I've found that it gets pretty distracting from actually making music and that having too many options is kind of a liability. So I like to create sort of a menu of choices. These are the drums and cymbals that I'm using on this project. These are the guitar pedals that I'm going to use on this project and try to keep it within that family of sound choices. Because of one, I think it gives a project some character. This is sort of the limited number of ingredients that are going into this piece or this album. And also it streamlines the workflow so that I'm thinking more about the kind of music that I'm playing, the notes that I'm choosing, and the sounds and the textures that I'm creating from how I approach the instrument rather than thinking, well, oh, I should probably, maybe I should try a different guitar, maybe I should try a different mic, maybe I should try all of these options that I have because I need to get the best thing. There really is no best thing, it's all subjective. And I tend to only try to change a part of the recording process if something is really not right. Maybe a microphone doesn't sound right and I'm gonna try something different. But for the most part, also because I'm engineering and playing in here, I try to keep it pretty simple. And in general, try to tailor everything to a workflow that creates as little drag on my forward motion as possible. Think of it like aerodynamics and streamlining all of this stuff. So that's my space. I've got a cool selection of amps. I have a limited but great selection of recording gear that I use. I have two drum kits and a couple of snare drums and a variety of cymbals because I, to kind of contradict what I just said, a little bit of variety goes a long way and I would kind of choose to have more variety in the instrumentation rather than the recording stuff just because that's my focus and that's my specialty. But I'm super thankful to have a space like this to work in with some natural light and I'm close to home and not commuting a really far distance. I mean, I, I can walk to the kitchen from here and make a coffee and come back and sort of build in little rituals and, and worthwhile distractions into the day. Because I also find that if I'm just concentrating on a piece of music endlessly, I will totally lose perspective. And sometimes I just gotta leave the room for 10 minutes and the answer to a question or a problem will arrive or I'll just start hearing something differently when I get back. So my encouragement to you is don't focus too much on what kind of gear you have or what you're lacking. Get some good tools. It's not that expensive to get a good sounding setup going. And even if you only have two inputs on your audio interface, do the most that you can with that figure out two microphones that are contrasting but work well together. You could go a long way just by getting a Shure SM7 and some kind of ribbon mic. I have a shiny box ribbon mic, which is made here in the great state of Washington that I love. Shout out to John Ulrig for that. But I could get away with doing a whole record with those two microphones. You got a kick and an overhead mic for your drum kit or two different sound selections for miking an amp. So I've gotten bogged down in the past by what piece of gear I thought I really needed in order to do better work. And I'm inspired by gear for sure, but the focus needs to be on making great music, not what am I using. And then 
take a minute to really think about your space. Remove clutter as much as possible. I'm not great at that, <laughs> I admit. And the more that I'm working in here, the more cluttered it gets. So I sort of have to build in times to know my space. I will put a link to a beautiful video that Tom Sachs did about his rules for people working in his art studio. I'll put it in the description. It influenced me a lot, even just in the way that you go about organizing a space so once you've made it messy from doing work. It's really inspirational and I, I think you'll dig it, so please check it out. And I, I tend to adopt a bit more of the Daniel Lenoir approach of, of like, if this microphone sounds good plugged into this preamp and this compressor, then that's kind of a sacred combination of things and you don't change it up a whole lot. Just move it around. If your source doesn't sound good on that microphone, choose something else. It's a bit simple and cro magnon but I find that it really works for me. So that's a bit of a ramble about my workspace and my thought process on engineering yourself and, and playing at the same time. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. If you have any cool ideas of other people's workspaces or workflows that you want to throw at me, please put that in the comments and please remember to go to my website and subscribe to receive my emails. I'll, I won't email you a bunch. I'll just send stuff periodically, but it's unique and interesting and I like to stay in touch. Thanks for watching.